everyone and we are live i got mr shannon pyatt man what the hell is up brother how are you doing what's going on buddy man just uh living the life you know doing 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 the real estate dream right holding it down in the carolinas that's right charlotte north carolina <laughs> man i love it you guys are crushing it out there brother i'm really excited to, to get you on and to talk to you today um, I've got a lot to talk about. Um, why don't we dive into kind of your background, um, how you how you got into real estate, why you got into real estate. Tell me that whole story. Okay. So actually, as everybody, nobody purposely gets into real estate, right? I mean, right. Like, no, yeah, no one, no one goes to no one grows up telling their parents they're gonna be a realtor. Usually <laughs> that never happens. Yeah, exactly. So um, so I mean I spent many, many years as a radio announcer, DJed in clubs. Uh, you know, both of us got a heart for the buckeyes, right? I was right there on High Street. Oh uh, H. I O, baby. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, I was right there on High Street. You know, I was I was I was working at Nios uh, at night, uh, which was the the country bar there in uh, in Columbus. Um, and then I was working at the uh, radio stations during the daytime. I, I worked at you know WCOL nine nine seven the Blitz uh, NCI all these stations uh, across uh, Central Ohio and. Uh, and so, you know, just like anything in, in business, uh, especially radio, if you've ever done anything related to media, you think real estate's cutthroat. <laughs> um, it's really cutthroat, right? And so uh, I ended up going to work for one of the, you know, one of the big companies. And, uh, and, and it was, you know, I thought by moving to a bigger market, because I, I moved from Myrtle Beach, I lived in North Carolina originally. I moved to Myrtle Beach, and then I got found by a radio uh, by a program director in Ohio, right, mm -hmm. to bring me to Ohio. And I thought, well, hey, that's market seventeen or whatever it was at the time, and it was a great market. So I'm going to move, and everything's going to be so much better. Well, when I got there, I realized there was ten thousand more times opportunity as far as uh, people wanting my job, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, it just got to a point that I actually got out of radio. Um, I got into new home sales, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, it was 2003, 2004, somewhere in that range. Um, and, uh, and during that time, um, you know, I, I went to work for a, a company up there called Dominion Homes. I don't even think they're around anymore. Yep. I've heard of Dominion. Um, I think MI bought Dominion, by the way. I think that's oh, what happened. They? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I, ha I had some issues with uh, with Dominion. They were doing some things that I wasn't real pleased with. And so I said, okay, look, I'm just going to step out and I'm going to go get my own real estate license. And so in 2004, I got my real estate license um, and, uh, and ended up going to work at uh, – my first job was Century Twenty One, believe it or not. Okay, uh, <laughs> and I'll never forget the the, uh, the 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 broker in charge or the broker at the time walked by, and he had we were all in these little cubicles, right? And he walks mm -hmm. by, and he these big thick phone books, and he walks by, and he's dropping them on everybody's desk. He's like, "Start dialing, start dialing, start dialing." <laughs> Old school, man. Old school, baby. Was he wearing a gold jacket too? He was. He was wearing the gold no jacket. Way. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, needless to say, I didn't last too long there. <laughs> um, and then I, I found a, a company called Exit Realty. Um, and I was with them uh, for, for some time and went on to become one of their uh, uh, not only top agents in the uh, central Ohio area, but also one of the uh, top uh, recruiting agents, so to speak, if you will, yeah. um, you know, for, uh, for Exit Realty. Um, and then after that, it was KW and so on and so forth from there. Yep. So we share that. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I came from KW as well, was there for three years and um, don't have a bad thing to say about Keller Williams. Uh, I enjoyed my time there uh, and I'm sure you did as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so KW was your last stop before transitioning over to, to EXP. But before we dive into, um, but before we dive into that, I, I want to talk a little bit about, um, because you you do really well, man, and 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 I know a lot of people um, 
you know, that creates credibility and influence when you do really well as a real estate agent, because people understand it's, it's not a, it's not an easy job. So I, I really want to dive into, um, you know, I really want to dive into how you found success in real estate. What, what are some of the principles that you follow or that guide you into having success? Um, first and foremost is you got to have a schedule, right? I mean, you've mm -hmm. got to, if, if the old adage, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. That is a fact in real estate. And mm -hmm. there's so many agents that I know that haphazardly do things, right? I mean, you know, they, you know, they'll, you know, they'll roll into the office at one o'clock in the afternoon because they've, you know, farted around for a lack of better words in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, and, and there's no, there's no consistency, right? There's no, I, I mean, so my thing is, is, you know, if I, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, uh, you know, if I'm going to prospect for sellers, I'm going to do it from this time to this time. If I'm going to prospect for buyers. I'm going to do it from this time to this time. If I'm going to uh, prospect to talk to other agents, I'm going to do it from this time to this time. Right. So there's a lot of, uh, you, know, you know, the scheduling really to me is, 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 is very, very crucial. And you got, I mean, you got to know where you're going because here's the thing, you know, uh, was it Zig Ziglar said that if you, you know, if you don't know where you're aiming, you're going to hit your spot every, you're going to hit it every single time, right? Yeah. I mean, pretty much the same concept. Yeah. So you, you so you, foundationally, it's like, you've got to run a schedule, right? If it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. So talk a little bit about like um, what a normal, what a normal day would look like for you. A uh, normal day is, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, now some of my other uh, buddies would give me a hard time because they're up at like four or five o'clock in the morning. I'm not that early. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll get up around seven or so, but I've got a regiment that I do, you know, and I spend time, you know, I spend time, uh, you know, uh, for me personally, my faith is a big thing. Right. So for me, I'm going to spend time in prayer and devotions. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat my breakfast. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get my mind set for the day. I'm going to journal, you know, uh, and, and, and I'm going to kind of get things going. Hal Elrod's got the best book out there. Miracle morning. If you've not read miracle morning, it's an incredible uh -huh. book. Um, and so, you know, it, it just gets you, it just gets you going. Right. So his thing is, you know, he gets up at five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning or whatever. And, you know, a bunch of my buddies do that as well. I'm just not that early of a riser. So I'll get up about seven, but I have my routine and at nine o'clock, I'm ready to start hitting the phones and, 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 and doing what needs to be done, uh, yeah. to, to, to make the business work. Right. Right. So are, are, are you generating most of your leads right now, uh, through prospecting efforts? Um, most of them, but you know what, where most of my leads come from, um, is, is referral, uh, sphere of influence, nice. right? Okay. Um, in 2016, I had some family issues in 2017, 2018. We lost, I lost my father in 2017. My wife lost her father in 2018. Hear that. We, had, we had some challenges that we went through. So those were not the strongest years, but like say 2016, I generated 77 referral leads in one year. Wow. And, wow. And, and it's just because, you know what, you got to be able to stay in contact with them. And people, you know, I hear people tell me all the time, you know, the 33 touch and all that stuff that we learned at KW. But yeah. here's here's my problem with that. Nothing, in my opinion, when it comes to referrals and, and building your sphere of influence, you should not have anything automatic going out into them. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. should be, you know, because they're going to see through that. Right. Would you agree with that? I mean, they're going to see that. Absolutely. That is, you know, that you've just got this, you know, automated system going out that's sending them a happy birthday or something like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, you know, I, I make the I make the point to call and get in contact with at least five people of my sphere every single day. Then I turn around and write them a handwritten note card you know, thanking them for their time and pay attention. If they say that their dog's sick or their kid just graduated school or whatever the situation is, write that down, right? Mm -hmm. Put it in the note card, thank them for it. You know, I use, uh, I, sometimes I don't want to necessarily do the hand card myself. I can, I go, you know, I, I'm a member of send out cards. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but I use, we use them as well. Yeah. And so, you know, I can go in there and type it out, send a gift with it and just little things like that, that, you want to stay top of mind. The reason that real estate agents, in my personal opinion, the reason that real estate agents do not stay uh, fresh and top of mind is because, you know, they're 
you know, you know, they're 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 uh, waiting three years, five years, ten years, and they're not reaching out to these people, right? Uh, or they're mm -hmm. reaching out to them once a year. Or they're sending them automatic automatic emails or recipe cards. Okay, we're not chefs, right? That's not yeah. our job. So, I mean, if you want to send them something automatic, you know, you set them up on your MLS and 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 send them, you know, send them updates in their neighborhood of, of when their neighbor's home. So that's more right. valuable than sending them. A recipe card in my personal opinion yeah yeah i would agree i would agree with that so um 77 referrals man in one year that's uh that's insane right. so um so are included in some of your prospecting efforts are you actually are you actually reaching out to your past clients and and maybe wishing them a happy birthday or just uh, kind of a drop-in call hey how's everything going is that part of your prospecting regimen Absolutely. So, so I, I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but there's a company out there called uh, Trip Valet. I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm involved with Trip Valet, um, and what it is is basically it's an app that's on my phone, and so it will tell me like if you if you go through Facebook, I can go through Facebook and I can see everybody's birthday that day or everybody's mm -hmm. anniversary that day, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I can do is I can go onto this app, and if I had a way to show you, I'd show you. But basically, I can click. Uh, a, a share link and it's a little image that says happy birthday just wanted to wish you happy birthday so on and so forth um and, and and i can send this and it says basically this it says hey to make your birthday a little bit better i would like to provide a trip for you uh to the bahamas or i'd like to provide a trip for you to mexico right um mm -hmm. and and so i take care of the hotel accommodations with this company that i'm involved with and then I'm able to give out these trips. Now they still have to pay their airfare and their taxes, right? But I'm yeah. able to give out these trips or I'm able to give out something of, of, of value to them. So for me, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm following up with birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, uh, you know, have, have a have a party once a year where, you know, we, we buy a bunch of pies and we bring, you know, Thanksgiving and, and people mm -hmm. come by and pick up their pie, right? Um, it, it's that kind of stuff uh, that really makes a difference. And, and that's the way that honestly, I get a ton of my leads, uh, of my, uh, my referrals, if you will, um, is just, you know, just being that person providing some something really cool. I'm telling you, if you send somebody to Mexico uh, for seven days, um, they're going to remember you whenever their neighbor's talking about selling their house. Yeah, dude, that's really cool. So you wake up every morning. I get that. I get that um, that alert too, right? It, and everyone gets it. Anybody who's on Facebook gets an alert that says it's so and so's birthday today. And and if you have a lot of connections, you know that list could be very long. Exactly. And so what you do when you get that is you say, okay, um, if I send this out to you know these three people, it could make an impact or these three people are past clients, right? Mm -hmm. So so the, the first thing to make that work is, and, when, and I don't wanna overlook this because it's not an easy thing, it, is that you know make sure you're connecting with your clients on social media, right? You have to connect with your clients on social media to make that work, right? Absolutely. And number two, you have to be very diligent um, about are very intentional about uh, looking at that email or that update every day to make sure that you are getting those out and and then the, and then so with the app what I'm hearing you say is that app it allows you to pay for uh, uh, for for hotel right for mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. and then they pay their air they pay their airfare and their taxes and, and anything else right but that's a that's that's a pretty cool thing man i don't know that i've heard anybody doing that what 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 was the name of that again that technology so if if you want to get more information on it just go to my website which is joinmytravelteam.com okay let's joinmytravelteam.com and i'll kind of give you a brief a uh, brief overview of it so okay. it, it's 97 dollars a month to belong to the club okay and you mm -hmm. get an unlimited amount of trips to give away plus you get to uh, you get just like send out cards, right? So you get you get unlimited trips to give away to your clients. Plus, you get to take one one trip basically per month yourself every year. You just can't repeat the same trip, right? And you get to go for wow. free as well. So it's so that within itself pays for the ninety seven dollars. But here's yeah. the cool part: is it's an affiliate program. So if you get three people signed up in the first thirty days, then you're actually going to get your subscription for free for the remainder 
of, of, of for a lifetime, right? Wow. If you have three people. And so you can't beat that. So when you think about it, you tell three people about it, they sign up. I mean, between you and I, and I said it's an affiliate program, between you and I, I'm making somewhere in the range of, you know, $1,500 or more a month in residuals off of this that's coming in every single month because I tell people about the program and it's pretty unique because people say, well, how can they give away the trip? The way it works is just like if you watch uh, Price is Right or you mm -hmm. watch Wheel of Fortune, they all have these trips they give away, right? They always do it. And then they say taxes and airfare excluded most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. People have to pay their taxes. Um, what it is is the hotels 30 days out have all these vacancies. And so they still have to pay for the staff. They still have to pay for their bartenders. They still have to pay for everybody to be there, right? And so their thing is, why not give away these hotel rooms, right, to, to people like this travel club, and then they can, in turn, put people in our hotel who are going to spend money at our bar, spend money at our casino, spend money on our valet, right? Yep. And so by doing that, that's really what ended up happening uh, with, with this particular company. Now, I want to go ahead and preface this right up front. There are no timeshares and there are no presentations. Okay. Your clients don't have to go through any of that stuff. This is just something that you're just able to give out, bless people, and then they love it and they tell everybody else. I mean, how many people, uh, you know, can, can go and say, hey, my realtor sent me to Mexico for eight days and seven nights. That's insane. I'm, I'm curious, man. Like, how do your clients respond? Like, like you, if you say, hey, I mean, they have to just be like dumbfounded. Oh, absolutely. They are. I mean, and they'll always say, how did you do this? And if they have an entrepreneurial mind, right, then I can immediately say, hey, why don't we set up a lunch and let's talk about this? Because I'm going to explain to you how it works and how you could even become a part of it and make some money. Right. Yeah, that's that's really neat, man. That's really neat. It's a very unique system. And it's and, and, and again, if anybody wants to get there's an eight and a half minute video. I actually generated 50 seller leads in seven days using this thing. OK. Wow. And yeah. And so there's an eight and a half minute video where they talk about me in the video. Um, if you go to joinmytravelteam.com, that's got all the information in there that you would need to know uh, to, uh, to, to, to get involved with it. It's, uh, it's a, it's a game changer for me. It really is. That's awesome. And yeah, and, and, and anything you can do, I mean, like that to, uh, differentiate yourselves from your competitors. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just like you talked about, it's right. People do business with people they know. Right. And, and right. one way to, to, to stay relevant, um, for a very long time is to give away a trip to Mexico. So, <laughs> I mean, there's not a, there's not a lot that could compete with that. So, so that obviously is part of your arsenal in in uh, in staying in front of your clients. What else are you doing? Um, as as far as that, again, like I said, I'm doing the handwritten note cards. Uh, you know, I will take a gift and I'll drop it off. Or a lot of times, I'll just use send out cards and I can attach, you know, some brownies or cookies or something along those lines. I mean, really, that's how I built my business. That's how I've grown my business. I mean, at one point in time, I did a lot of for sale by owners and I can still do the for sale by owner thing. And that's great. I generated 37 for sale by owners in one year. Um, you know, so that works as well, too. But I'm telling you, there's nothing better than working with a referral. OK, there's nothing better than it uh, because they they respect you. They don't want to cut your uh, you know, cut your commissions down. They, you know what I mean? There, yeah. there, there, there's a mutual respect there because someone said your name, right? Um, and, and, and no matter how much you spend on advertising, I don't care if you spend $10,000 a month in Facebook advertising or $20,000 a month on Zillow, you're never going to get the return from that that you're going to have from spending $500 to $1,000 a month in building your referral network. Right, right. I would agree with that, man. So um, that's awesome, man. I, and that's that's what I really wanted to hit on is is where you're where where you're really um, where you're a 10 out of 10. And, and that sounds like an area you're a 10 out of 10 on is 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 creating that repeat and referral business. So here's the question I have, man. So, um, you know, you obviously you're an entrepreneurial guy um, and, and you've got that part of it figured out. So uh, and you've had success in real estate. And so, you know, you're at Keller Williams, right? You're chugging along, you're having great success. And uh, one day comes and you hear about this company, EXP. Tell me about the first day you heard about EXP. 
Okay, so the very first day that I heard about uh, EXP um, was right when things were going pretty well. I told you 2016, I was crushing it, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it was it was right around that time that I had heard about it. Uh, Sheila Fejeron, which is my sponsor. Mm -hmm. OK, um, she had reached out to me um, and this is back before Brent Gove or any of those guys ever joined the company. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and she reached out to me and she said, look, you know, would you be interested in this particular situation? I said, no, nope, not really. And between you and I, Mike, I wouldn't even watch the video. OK. So when people tell me they won't watch the video, I'm like, ah, come on, <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, uh, I wouldn't, I, I wasn't interested at all. And so, uh, about a year later, I, I think I told you, you know, I got audited by the IRS. I got my my grandfather passed away, my dad passed away, my best friend passed away. Um, you name it, it happened that year, right? Yeah. And then Sheila called me, and I'll never forget. It was that's why I want people to understand EXP is so much about relationships. I hear people tell me all the time, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's an, just an agent attraction thing. It's just this, it's just that. It's just, it, it is relationships. And let me tell you why it's relationships. Cause Sheila picked up the phone and she called me and she said, Shannon, she said, I know what you've been through. She said, and I'm really sorry. She said, and I didn't want to talk to you about real estate or anything. I just wanted to call and pray for you. And right now let you know that I'm here for you. And I got to tell you, Mike, I mean, it brings tears to my eyes right now just thinking about it, right? Because at that point, I said, you know what? Yeah, Sheila, I am interested. Tell me what you got. Yeah. Because I knew she cared, right? It wasn't just her reaching out to try to bring me into her team, so to speak, right? Yeah. And so I watched the video and I was like, why did I not do this a year ago? <laughs> And so um, anyway, that that was the thing. And that was that was the changing moment in my life. And now whenever I get, you know, get to go and talk to Brent and all these different guys that, you know, that she, you know, that she's brought on, she's built this huge organization. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I realized that and I tell them, I'm like, look, guys, this woman right here changed my life. So when I say that, you know, when people say, oh, well, you know, it's just joining another real estate company. It's not just joining another real estate company. This is, you know, as well as I do, this is not just another real estate company. This is a life changer. When you have that stock coming in, when you have that revenue share coming in that takes that roller coaster effect out of real estate, right? To where you know that every month your mortgage is paid, your car payments paid, your utilities are paid. If nothing else, those are taken care of. Mm -hmm. And if that deal falls apart, you're not sitting there going, oh, what am I going to do this month? Right. Yeah. And we've all been there. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been there many times, Mike, you know, many times. And so that's what I loved about EXP. And that was the game changer for me was like, look, you know, I, 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 aside from the collaboration and everything else, I mean, I love all that stuff about EXP. There's nothing about the company I don't love. Yeah. But the, the fact of the matter is, I've never had an opportunity where I could actually, uh, you know, not have to worry about if I wanted to take that, let's say for a sale by owner, right? He's being a jerk, right? I don't want to take that listing, but I have to take it because I don't have any other options, right? That's the way we've always been. And it's so nice to be able to sit back and say, and I've done this, say, you know what? Listen, you and I, we're just not meshing. We're not, we're not seeing eye to eye. And honestly, I don't have to take your business. I, I like. I, I would like to. I would like to be able to help you get the home sold. But I'm just thinking that we're not going to work well together. That is an empowering, invigorating feeling that people can't understand until they're in a position to where they can actually say, "I don't have to do that." Right. Yep. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, you know, you obviously you found out from Sheila, and and um, you know, or she's the one that brought it to your attention. So, tell me about like. Tell me about how quickly or tell me about the, 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 the first time you actually watched the video and then from what happened from that point forward? <laughs> well, I remember sitting there watching it and I'm thinking, OK, I know that I'm not leaving. I'm good where I'm at. I'm, you know, but OK, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to at least, you know, just, you know, just pacify her, if nothing else. Right. right. 
And so I'm sitting here watching it and I'm like, okay, all right, okay, I, okay, okay, okay. And then about the time we got into the stock and I realized that, wait a minute, you know, every time I've closed on a transaction at ERA or Keller Williams or wherever I was at, I got a pat on the back and I got an attaboy, way to go, right? Um, you know, I, I brought somebody into the company because I thought it was a good company. I got, guess what? Nothing, right? And so I'm like, wait a minute, with all my relationships that I have, with the transactions that I'm doing, the fact that I can not only just, uh, you know, after $16,000, you know, I, I become 100%, 100% that I can also icon that I can turn around and get that entire $16,000 back for just doing my job for selling in this area, 30 to 35 homes a year, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, how amazing was that opportunity? And I'm sitting here going, wait a minute. So, so the 80, 20 split, the $16,000 cap became very, very minimal in my scope of things because I was looking at it originally from, okay, I'm on a 95, five. Why would I leave a 95, five to go to an 80, 20, mm -hmm. but when you, it, it's a paradigm shift, right? So when you start thinking about, okay, you're not thinking about the 20% and the 16,000 cap, you start thinking about, okay, I did 35 transactions, 5% plus a 350 transaction fee. I paid $27,000 on a 95.5. Yeah. A raise to come here. Because it's not capped. Exactly. Because, but, but, but people get it in their minds that they, they, they hear a split and they can't get past that split. And, mm -hmm. and the thing about EXP, if you sit down and you add it up, had I stayed at ERA, which was my last place before I came here, right? If I had stayed at ERA on my 95.5 split, well, first of all, I would have ended up paying more this year yeah. in, 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 my, in my fees, right? And, and secondly, you know, I actually would have this, um, I, I would have left so much money on the table, right? I mean, because I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, what's better than 100%? There's nothing better than 100%. Yeah, there is. 138%, Mike. That's what I made this year. 138%. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, that's and, crazy. I hope people hear that. Yeah. Like, uh, so you're on a 138% commission split. Absolutely. I mean, because here's the thing. I mean, yeah, I'm on the 80 20 till I pay the 16, right? Yeah, no, no. Listen, I'm, I'm right. I'm right there with you, brother. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but if you if you add it up and you say, okay, my stock and my revenue share that's right. coming in, and even if your revenue share is, you know, you know, five thousand dollars a month, that still covers every single bill that you basically have in, in real estate. If you cut back and and don't don't spend crazy, you know, you're not spending twenty thousand dollars a month in Zillow ads, right? Yeah. Five thousand dollars a month, a lot of people can live very comfortably on that alone, right? Yeah. And, and, and all it is is doing no more different than what I did when I was at ERA or when I was at Keller Williams, okay, is I would tell people, hey, you know what? I like this company. This is a great office. You should join us. And they do, right? And, and, and by, fault, by default, they did that, and I made nothing. I mean, at Keller Williams, you know, we had the profit share. And I want people to understand, <laughs> when I hear people say, oh, you guys are profit share, I say, no, time out, wait. I've worked on profit share. There's a big difference between profit share and revenue share. Okay. Um, my biggest check for profit share was $27.81. Because what people don't understand is this profit is whatever's left over, right? Would you agree, Mike? That's exactly yeah. what it is. It's yeah. what left over. So they're going to pay their brokers, they're going to pay their owners, they're going to pay their team leaders, they're going to pay their managers, they're going to pay their front desk staff, their admin people, everybody's going to get paid first. The cleaning people? Exactly. Yeah. Everybody gets paid first. And then whatever this profit, quote unquote, is, if they decide to have any that month, right, is going to be split among 300, 400, 500, 800 agents, depending mm -hmm. on how big your office is. So, when you're talking about a profit share, which is what's left at the bottom versus a revenue share, which is what's at the top. So what people don't understand, Mike, and you know this, you get this. If I bring you into this company and you go out and you sell a $10,000 commission, you're going to pay your 20% to the company. Out of that 20%, 
the company is going to pay me a $350 referral fee. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but if you're selling a bunch of houses, that adds up. And then you go tell people, and then all of a sudden, they're paying referral fees, and you're getting paid referral fees. It, it, it is an incredible opportunity, and I think a lot of people are so blinded by the way that real estate has always been done that they can't see the light. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're seeing the light, brother, uh, to the tune of about 100 agents every week. So we just passed the 16,000 agent mark. Absolutely. And uh, we are definitely making an impact. Um, so I'm curious, man. So you made the change. Um, how have, how, has, how has your business been since you made the change? Oh, it's been incredible. So uh, here's the thing. <laughs> this is probably not the greatest thing to say, but I'm not working as hard now as I was. I was killing myself, right? I was trying to do, you know, 50, you know, 50, 60 transactions a year, all this different stuff, you know, by myself. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Why am I doing that? I mean, I can still sell. And don't get me wrong, I'm still selling. I'm not saying I'm not selling real estate. Right. That's what we do. We sell real estate. But I'm being able to be more selective about who I want to work with. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, and so you have a now, standard. What's that? You have a standard. Exactly. Yeah. And and if and if people are trying to you know browbeat me on my commission, I can say, I'm sorry, I'm not the agent for you, but I'll be more than happy to pass your name along to somebody I know who can. Right. And and that's that, that's a really freeing feeling. And so for me, you know, my business has been it's been great. Uh, you know, as far as uh, building my team, you know, things have been well there. I brought on 21 personal people to the company, um, you know, and, uh, and and that just keeps growing. Right. It just keeps it bigger and bigger. That's great, man. That's great, man. So I, I'm glad I'm glad you're doing so well. And, and I think that, um, you know, p people like you, you're just a good person, man. And, and people want to be around you. People want to do business with you. And I think that's why you have such great success in real estate. So, so we've talked about the past. We've talked about the present. Let's talk about the future, man. What's the future hold for Shannon Pyatt? Future for Shannon Pyatt. Um, I'm going to be Rob Flick, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me no. too. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I mean, uh, pe people don't realize the amount of crazy money that that man is making. Um, yeah. and, 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 and really you know, what did he do? He worked hard for basically two years and now he just kind of lives life, right? <laughs> AJ, living life, right? That's what he's doing. Um, you know, uh, realistically, um, for me, uh, my wife's been working third shift for 25 years, okay? okay. Um, she's burned out on it. She's tired of it. Uh, we've got ailing parents back, uh, you know, back up near Asheville, up in the, up toward the mountains. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to, uh, hopefully relocate into that area at some point and be able to, you know, just live a, live a little bit more of a simple life, right? Take more vacations, yeah. uh, spend more time with the family. Uh, you know, I hate to say sell less real estate, but honestly sell less real estate because I've been in this business 15 years now, almost 15 years now. And, uh, and you know what? It, it, it wears on you. It wears on your health, oh, yeah. it wears on your stress level. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in and out of the hospital because of transactions going crazy and everything else. Right. We think we've kind of all done that if we've been oh, in. Yeah. Enough, right. And uh, and so now, you know what? My goal is, you know, I'm going to work with who I choose to work with. I'm going to work with a select handful of people, so to speak. Um, and uh, and then I'm going to build my team out and I'm going to let my team grow. And uh, and I'm just going to live life, man. I mean, my, my goal is, I'm you know, I'm 44 now. Um, I'm giving myself and this is a long term goal, but I think it would happen much sooner. I'm giving myself to the age of 50, which I think I'll actually be sooner than that. But by the age of 50, uh, you know, I want to be retired, have uh, a home in uh, Hilton Head, which we love to go to Hilton Head. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and have a home over in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which I love that place as well. Yes, sir. And, uh, and you know, and, and just, and just enjoy life. I mean, man, so imagine this, if you can, if you can cut, if you can cut work off or, or cut most of work off at age 50 and live to your 80 and live those full 30 years and enjoy that time with a residual income coming in just because you put in five years worth of hard work, right? Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to do it? You forgot to tell me that you were going to buy uh, uh, Buckeye season tickets. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> season tickets. And of course, my Lamborghini, too. I got to have a Lamborghini. There you go. There you go. There you go, man. You got to be like Brian Casella, right? And get the Lamborghini yeah, yeah, going. Yeah. Man, man, I'm telling you, that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful car he's got for sure. Yeah, that, that's awesome, man. Well, I, I always wrap the show up with one question, man. And because, um, you know, a, a lot of people will watch the show and listen to the show. Um, and, and so what I, what I want to ask you um, is to share with that agent or that broker out there who is considering a move to another brokerage, maybe even to EXP or just trying to get some additional information on EXP. What do you tell that person? Do your research. OK, don't listen to your current broker. OK, your current broker is going to fill your head full of you're not going to go to your broker and say, hey, I'm thinking about going to EXP. They're going to say, man, that's a wonderful idea. I think you should join them right away. That is not going to happen. OK, they're going to tell you every reason why you shouldn't join. They're going to tell you that this is some sort of a scam. They're going to tell you. I mean, literally, I've heard it all. OK, yeah. they're going to tell you all these different things that they want you to believe because they want to keep you there. I mean, what people don't understand is I hear people say all the time, you know, I can't believe that they give that money back. Why would they give that money back? Well, would you rather be at a company that's going to give the money back or would you rather be at a company that's going to keep all the money for themselves? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even if it's 10% or 5%, they're keeping every bit of that money for themselves, right? EXP's giving it back. How are we giving it back? Because we don't have any brick and mortar, right? We don't have yeah. any, we don't have any overhead that we have to pay. So we're able to give it back. But I'm telling you, do your research, do your due diligence. All right. Don't, don't just, and again, don't just talk to an EXP agent, talk to other people, right? Don't just talk to your broker that you're currently with. Do your research. There's plenty of videos out there. We've all got great videos. Brent's got a great video. Um, you know, you need to understand what you're saying no to. OK, don't say no until you know for sure what you're saying no to. I did that. I regret it. I would have been the very first, probably one of the very first agents, if not the very first agent in the state of North Carolina. Did, I mean, did you see that we sold a billion dollars in real estate this year? in mm -hmm. EXP? We, we hit the number one status in Charlotte over all the brokerages in one year. How incredible is that, right? I could have been at the top of that totem pole. I could have been AJ riding around in my RV, right? But I, I listened to the naysayers. I said, ah, no, nah, not interested, you know. So don't listen to that garbage, you know, filter that stuff out and be and, and, and learn for yourself. Don't let somebody else make your decision for you. People say, I love my broker. I love my broker. OK, great. Love your broker. But I want to ask you this. Go to your broker and say, you know what? I love you so much. I think you're so fantastic. By the way, will you pay my mortgage payment, my car payment next month? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love it, man. He may love you, but he's not going to love you that much. Right. Yep. Um, and, and, and you know what? EXP does pay my mortgage payment, does pay my car payment, does pay my utilities. Right. Um, and, and, and there's plenty of guys out there, you know, people don't understand this revenue share thing could be hundreds of dollars a month. It could be tens of thousands of dollars a month or people hundreds, or hundreds of thousands. Yeah. I mean, literally I know, I mean, you know, I know people directly who I'm very, very close with making hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. It's right. not, it's not, uh, it, it, people say, Oh, that, that only happens to them. No, this, this is, this is legit. And, and guys, I'm telling you, if you're looking for a game changer in your life, there's none other than EXP. Say hi to Melissa DeSantis. She's Melissa, watching. Hello. How are you, dear? Love what you're saying. Fantastic. Thank well, you. Well, I think, I think, brother, with, with that answer, we can uh, drop the mic, man. So um, so tell me this, man. How, how can people connect with you if they want to learn more about EXP or if they want to learn how to crush their sphere of influence through... Uh, through uh, just aggressive follow-up and sending out cards. How can people connect with you, brother? Yeah, so uh, there's a few different ways. Uh, you can call me. I don't mind. People can call me, 704-968-2821, 704-968-2821. Um, the best thing to do is add me on Facebook, right? I mean, that's really the best thing to do is just, you know, type in Shannon Pyatt. You'll see me there um, and, and, and add me on Facebook. I'll be more than happy to share anything with you. Uh, if you want to learn about EXP, 
Um, you know, I've got I've got a, a seven minute video. It's called a new kind of real estate dot com, a new kind of real estate dot com. Seven minutes. It's all it takes. It'll give you an overview. We can talk about it more. And I'd love to help you with that. I'd love to help you with the TVI stuff, with helping you crush it, with, uh, you know, giving all this, uh, you know, giving all this stuff away and, 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 and getting these referrals uh, again. Uh, or the, if you want to email me, feel free to do that. That's uh, that's Shannon.Pyatt, P-Y-A-T-T, at exprealty.com. All right, my brother. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to spend with us here and share your story. I appreciate it. Don't be a stranger, my man. Sounds great, Mike. Thanks so much. OH. I.O., baby. See ya. See ya.